Welcome, listeners and viewers, to our Upstander project. My co-host Naomi and I will guide you along our collage about our Upstander, Nuarco Nikki Sawada Bridges Flynn, who is a civil rights activist. Let me bring your attention to Section 1, all about her family and early life. You may notice that there are no pictures of her parents, just workers in a field and on a railroad. This is due to the lack of photos online and photography in general at the time, so we were unable to find a picture of either of her parents. Flynn was born on February 11th, 1923, in Gardena, California, in Los Angeles County, to Ashiko and Urasawada, Japanese immigrants. Ashiko left behind a first wife in Japan in 1901 when he moved to the United States, and he was only 26 years old at the time. Partly due to a lack of income for support for his wife, they divorced. He then spent 10 years working as a farmer, traveling from place to place, and as a railroad laborer, C1A, until he had saved up enough money to get married. Ura, however, had a more difficult time adjusting. Ura was the daughter of a wealthy rice merchant, but in an account given by Flynn to Miss Magazine in 1980, a scandalous backstory was revealed that Ura had tried to leave behind when she left Japan. At the age of 16, she had gotten pregnant by a neighbor's son, which brought great shame and dishonor upon Ura and her family. The child died when he was only two years old, though. She was lucky, for her cousin, who also happened to be an acquaintance of Ashiko, offered her and her family a chance to move abroad to the United States and marry. Ura saw this as a way to escape the mess and took it, becoming a picture bride, a bride who was selected by immigrant workers on the West Coast, Canada, and Hawaii from their native country. She first met her husband, Ashiko, in 1918 in the San Francisco port. Looking at 1B, the two settled down for a peaceful life of farm work and growing green beans, tomatoes, and strawberries in Southern California on leased land. The couple bore two children, a daughter, Noriko, Flynn, and a son who unfortunately died as an infant. Now, if I can guide your attention over to Section 2, we will start on the influences that impacted Flynn's activism. Flynn had attended Santa Ana Junior College in 1942, C2A, and was just completing her first year there. Suddenly, Executive Order 9066 authorized the internment of tens of thousands of people of Japanese ancestry. Flynn and her family were then forcibly held at an internment camp at Poston, Arizona for three years, view 2B. Flynn felt so trapped by her predicament and Ura's constant attention needs that she attempted to commit suicide. After her years of internment camp incarceration, she moved to Berkeley and became involved politically in many groups, like the Berkeley Interracial Committee and the AFL-CIO, the American Federation of Labor and Congress of Industrial Organizations. She also helped resettle other Japanese Americans along the West Coast while she worked with the War Relocation Authority, shown at 2C. She later claimed that her years of imprisonment within the internment camp allowed her to see how corrupt and unjust American society was, and that it was a major impact on her decision to stand up for fair treatment of immigrants, racial, gender, and sexual equality, and workers and union rights. Flynn worked as a legal secretary for Charles Gary, a lawyer for some political radicals at the time such as Eldridge Cleaver and Huey Newton, C2D. Flynn later stated that this also contributed to her views of the unjust American society and further influenced her decision to stand up for these issues. Her more famous deeds of activism were sparked by her first marriage. Her first husband, shown at 3A, was Harry Bridges. He was a famous labor rights leader from San Francisco and activist that helped form the IL. W.U., the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, shown at 3B. They met in 1950 when Charles Gary introduced Flynn to Bridges. Later, on December 7, 1958, the couple wanted a quiet marriage and drove all the way to Reno, Nevada, not knowing that miscegenation laws were in effect at the time. The two asked the marriage clerk for their license, but the clerk denied them on account of an 1846 law that prohibited marriages between individuals of different races. Several news interviews and accounts report the clerk saying it's not a matter of where you were born, it's the blood. It's against the law here. Mr. Bridges took the case to court and to national press, and also managed to get lots of media cover for it. During the next four days, Bridges and Flynn struck down the 1846 law and got married in the Reno courtroom on December 11th, View 3C. The Bridges then went on to become one of the top and most renowned power couples in San Francisco for their time together during the next 32 years, and they even had a child, Catherine Bridges Wigan, shown at 3D. Flynn also traveled and spoke about human rights to anyone from schoolchildren to longshoremen, with notably, some might say, a devilish sense of humor. At the age of 50, she went back and enrolled in creative writing courses at San Francisco State University. 
Over the next 10 years, she wrote and published many articles giving detailed experiences of her childhood and the time spent at the internment camp in Poston, and also managed to write three autobiographical pieces, two of which made their debut in national magazines. Memoir of a Japanese Daughter appeared in Miss Magazine, and Papa Takes a Bride, which made an appearance in Harper's. In addition, Flynn won the Penny Award for Literature from the University of Missouri, and was elated to have been placed in the top entries for the bulwer lytton Fiction Contest for San Jose University one year about the ideas for the funniest opening sentence to a really bad novel. Furthermore, she also assisted her husband when he turned up the heat by joining with shippers in the battle for union rights for assurances of job security in the 1970s. At the time, Bridges' major contender was the president of the Pacific Maritime Association, Ed Flynn, but more on him later. Later, in the 1970s and 1980s, there were frequent movements to bring to light the evils of World War II relocation camps, and of course, Flynn joined in and gave her support. In 1988, the Civil Liberties Act was passed and expressed remorse for the government's actions and compensated each living survivor with a check for $20,000. Flynn used some of her funds to hire a Caucasian gardener. In 1990, at at a congressional ceremony in San Francisco, the government formally made amends and atoned for their actions. At this ceremony, Flynn read a long poem she wrote titled, To Be or Not to Be, There's No Such Option. This poem apologized to the people of Japanese ancestry that were incarcerated, and it received high and very emotional praise. She also became a member of the National Japanese American Historical Society, and Flynn was crucial to the planning of a landmark exhibit in 1990 at the Oakland Museum called Strength and Diversity, Japanese American Women, 1885-1990. At the same time, she contributed to the Pacific Asian American Women Bay Area Coalition, view logo at 4A, from which she had the honor of receiving the Asian Woman Warrior Award in 1988 and the Japanese Women's Group. Sadly, though, Harry Bridges died on March 30, 1990. Flynn married a second time, this time to Ed Flynn, the former political cohort of Harry Bridges. However, Miss Flynn held the wedding on May 1, 1994, also known as International Workers' Day, at the Olympic Club. She chose this location because the club had recently lost a lawsuit against the San Francisco City Attorney, which then forced the club to admit women as true and full-time members. She continued to support the ILWU on certain occasions by lending money and died on February 7, 2003, in Pescadero, California, at the age of 79. Mrs. Flynn is survived by her daughter, Catherine Bridges Wigan, and two stepchildren, Mary Shell and Robert Bridges. And that is all about our upstander. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoyed our project and learned a little something as well.